Shalom, saints. If you don't mind, please give me a sound check. And yes, Shalom, the King is coming. I'd like to greet you all tonight in the name of Jesus as I come here before you. I'm Deacon Bell, your host for this edition of the Brother Segment of the Straightway Truth, Straightway Truth Radio Broadcast. I'd like to bless you all. Bless you, Brother Ugly. Thank you again for being co-host, moderator. Appreciate all that you do, my brother, your labors, all the labors you do with um, Straightway News. You too, Brother Steve, Sister Wendell, all that y'all do for the ministry as well. We just you know, greatly appreciate all the works of your hands. Hallelujah. See tens. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Well, just like to bless y'all tonight, saints. Bringing the word to you, ministering to you tonight, the study, exhortation. You know, we we had a we had a good message yesterday from the man of Yah, as always, still teaching us to strengthen strengthen the body of Christ by, by all the power of Yah that's within him, the love that he has for the saints, coming forth, ministering to us, teaching us, not holding anything back from us, not keeping the keeping the workings of the spirit a secret from us or, hi- or hiding it from us, but, you know, bring it out there, put it on the table so that we can be partakers and, and make us able ministers as well. And I do bless our pastor and thank him for all his labors that he does. You know, he labors so much tirelessly and we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for him. You know, being, you know, being obedient to the most high and upon the calling upon his life and the sacrifices that he has to make to, uh, Minister all minister to minister to all of us, bringing us the word. You know, we need to, like Elder Rufus said in that one video of his, um, we need to appreciate the gift. Uh, hallelujah. Well, hold on. am I still low? Am I coming in better? Hold on a second. Uh, let's see. How's that sound? Am I still getting tens? Am I still getting tens or am I still low? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can you hear me now, saints? Is that better? Let me see what else I can do here. Just a little more. Just a little more. How's that, saints? Is that better, Ten. I see tens. Okay, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ten, but still low. Hmm. Hold on a second. Give me a justice mic. Let's try that. Oh, and it's falling. Let's try the mic. Let's give it some more. Wait a minute. Where are we? Uh, right there. Let's see. Hold on. All right. How's that? How's that? Is that better? A little more better volume? Or am I still low? Still low. I see from. Hold on a second. Let me adjust this mic. Hallelujah. Am I still low, Brother Steve? Anybody? Yep. Keep on. Deacon. Okay, let's keep going. Right, we'll keep going. All right. Hallelujah. Where is it? All right. I'm going to take it up some more. Give us more. Hallelujah. Let me get closer. I'm going to try to get you all the best sound I can give you. All right. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Does that get better? Ten. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Better? Okay, praise y'all. Let's see. Let me turn up some more. Let me try to give y'all as much as I can give you. Hope I won't, won't come distorted in the computer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Ten. Okay, I see tens now. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Ten. All right. Praise y'all. Don't, we don't want any technical difficulties if we can help it. Hallelujah. Uh, praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See teens. Okay, praise y'all. All right, we'll, we'll get started then. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 10. I mean, chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And we all should know this scripture because we use this one all the time in this ministry. Hallelujah. Ah, 
the whole my word. Okay. And it's a very important scripture too, saints. There's something, you know, when I was a Christian, that that, that was a, that scripture was never preached or mentioned in any kind of way that I know of. It, it might, if it was used, it was never emphasized, if I can say that. Never emphasized to the degree that um we have now. Thank you for posting that, Brother Ugly. You know what it reads? And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You know, of course, we have people out there today now who say we don't have need anyone teach us, you know, because we have the spirit that's supposed to teach us, teach us with the unction that we have. But, you know, if there wasn't a man that was, a man standing before us preaching to us, we wouldn't get knowledge and understanding. You know, we, we, we'd be out there, you know, we'd be people um, that, that are island to ourselves, thinking we know something when we know nothing, you know, vainly puffed up at times. And, um... You know, it would be so just just so lost without understanding. If I can just say that. There's just you know having a you know what's the scripture say? What's it say? What did Paul say? No, Isaiah say, how should they hear with all the preacher? You know, Pastor even went over that not too long ago. And how should they preach except they be sent? You know, so we got to have a preacher in order, in order that we can hear. Thank y'all. We got preachers so we can hear. They're giving us the word as long as we have ears to hear. Hallelujah. So let's be grateful for the pastors that we have. All right, let's go to Jeremiah twenty three thirty. You know, there's a reason why I'm using that scripture too. You know, because you know there is a the Father has established an order in the body. You know, brother ugly posters in there. You know, we got, but you know, we got we got to have the men of Yah. That's part of the order. You know, we, when our, when our people came out of Israel, you know, they had Moses as the you know as the deliverer, the the, 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 the most high mouthpiece. You know, the one who was the lawgiver. And everything, but even before before Moses even came back, you know, before the Father brought him back to deliver the word to Pharaoh and call all the elders together, you know, he had the people in in, in Egypt, and they even had elders there that were that were overseeing, them. you know, men that were in charge, the leaders of the tribes and all that, you know. So today we we definitely don't need to be an out of order people, and there's a lot of folk that like to, uh, you know, attach themselves to the ministry. At times, and, but yet they don't want to submit. You know, these people that follow are far off. You know, spying on liberty. You know, picking and choosing what they, you know, what they want to hear and what they want to submit to, or what they want to adhere to. How you know, how you, you know, the way the ways they go about doing things. But yet they sooner or later, some of them, some of them call, some of them don't. Some of them just you know stay out there on the fringe. You know, just gleaning what they can. You know, but not not making themselves known and not committing, whether it be for fear. Or they're just people who are just um, going going with Jeremiah um, twenty three thirty. We'll get to it in just a second. You know the ministers of Satan that are out there listening. You know, let's read let's do, let's read Jeremiah twenty three thirty first. Did you post that in there yet, brother? Jeremiah, I'm sorry, you quoted. To tell you that, okay, yeah, Jeremiah twenty three thirty, please, brother. There you go. Let me read. Therefore, behold, I am against the the prophets, saith the Lord. I'm reading for the King James. That steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. You know, you now how do they steal the words from the, you know, from their neighbor? You know, because you got this. You know, even amongst us as brothers and sisters as well too. You know, we can steal the words from, from our neighbor too. You know, we can be that serpent. That, you know, when the words stolen our brother's sister's heart, we can catch. We can catch that word and do our own wicked words. We can steal it right out of their hearts too. We're casting our doubts, our unbeliefs. You know, like you know, from visiting the fatherless to casting out the devils. You know, that's how they're stealing the words because they'll say things like, "I don't believe like that," or "It's not for our time." You know, things you've heard in the churches, the camps, or, or just telling the truth about the Messiah's color, or who the covenant people are today. You know, these things like the messianic, messianics. You know, like to hold back, and the Christian churches, the leaders that know, hold back. You know, so there's a lot of people stealing the words. And the ones who like to keep you away from the true men and y'all that's out there. You know, like, hey, you don't need to listen to that preacher. You know, we don't need nobody to teach us anything. We can learn on our own. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can only go so far on your own. But you're going to have to be become part of the body. You're going to have to, you're going to have to uh, stop trying to be an island to yourself. 
and forsaking the fellowship. You know, I got a scripture, scripture here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I got myself out of order here, but I'll just go ahead and go there first. Um, Brother, Brother Ugly, would you post in the chat Hebrews 10.25, please? But, you know, you got a lot of you brothers and sisters out there. You know, elders have given you instructions, you know, or you've called here and gotten instruction from Pastor or Elder Becker or, or anyone you've talked to, you know, about how, how to get in touch with the fellowships. Or, or to, um, come visit some of these el- elders. The elder, you know, a few of the elders have told me about things they know of. You know, they've given instruction to to come visit them. And yet they, uh, they, um, they forsake assembling themselves together, like it reads in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And that, that wicked mannerism of some of these wicked saints out there, brothers, sisters, wicked saints out there, they won't, they won't come to fellowship. They won't, you know, make themselves known. They don't want to submit to the rulership, the leadership, you know, because then they'd be held accountable. I think that's a lot of it. Or they got their own reasons, their own doctrines, the reason why they won't, you know, won't make, you won't, won't follow the the Bible order. You know, they got their, their, you know, their fears, their prejudices. You know, because some brothers have a problem with, with um, with our our, our uh, leadership that doesn't have mel- melanated skin. And just the brothers and the brothers and sisters in the assembly who are non melanated you know, their prejudices won't let them uh, assemble themselves. And, and a dog, dog on show ain't gonna submit to uh, uh, um, Elder Becker, Teacher Shane, Brother Steve, or just any brother that's around that is not melanated. But they're just wicked in that in that regard. And they better get their, need to get their wicked hearts right. All right, let's go to um, Lamentations two fourteen, please. You know the sad shame about that too, saints. And some of these people that forsake the assembly, you know, they don't live too far from it. You know, from other saints either. You know, they're with, well within driving distance, an hour, maybe some of them like twenty minutes. You know they got you know they got they can go everywhere else but they can't make it to assembly. Yeah, that's a sad shame. And you look at what the Most High God is doing. You know the Spirit moving amongst His people. You know Father's healing and delivering His people. You know what? Why? Why are you folks so afraid to come and uh, join up with the body, but yet you separate? You still remain separate from it, from the body. You know being sensual, earthly, and devilish. All right. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. And they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Come on, let's read the scriptures version on this one. Let me get there. Give me a second. I like the way it reads in that one as well. Hmm. You can post that in the chat too, Brother Ugly, if you got the scriptures version. Your prophets have seen falsehood and folly for you and have not shown you your crookedness to turn back your captivity. But their visions for you are false and misleading messages. You know, you look at what pastor's been preaching to us. You know, they've not dis- discovered thy iniquity to you, your crookedness. You know, pastor's teaching us how to uh, cleanse our bloodline with, with the prayers he's been teaching us. Breaking the agreements and getting back on the same same side in, in agreement and unity with Yah, you know, through the blood of Jesus. But, you know, they, but cleansing, our, cleansing us from our iniquities, you know, breaking generational curses. You know, what, what are these ministers afraid of? They don't, they don't teach you this stuff. They teach you how they teach you how to stay stay bound, more or less. You know, and they te- they they seem for the false burdens and causes of banishment. 
or misleading messages, you know, like like in the Christian church, they'll tell you, you know, y'all want you to have the best. That the prosperity movement was, was, was notorious for that. I remember a man I knew who he, he was into that. And I tell you, <laughs> you know, I built off on it for a little bit until I realized, hey, wait a minute. You know, if you're giving all this money to these preachers who buying these, buying these, you know, loading themselves up, fleecing the flock, you know, what, what's going to be left for you? Or well, like our pastor said yesterday, um, you know, you're going you're gonna, to uh, you give this man all this money, but the people can barely pay their bills. You know, they're starving, can't keep the lights on. I mean, what, what's going on with that in, in that regard? But these people have, have seen for you false burdens and causes of banishment, keeping you, keeping it so you stay in exile, too. Or getting cast away from the Most High Yah, not not bringing you nearer, you know, not turn, help, not helping you to turn from your iniquity, not helping you to turn from your sins, your transgressions, not getting you clean. And there's a sad change, the sad change, saints, especially when we have the opportunity to be fed like we're fed. You know, and, and what I'm talking, saints, I know it's, it's not just for the you who are, you um, straightway saints, because you know there's a lot of people that. That listens to, to to everything that Straightway puts out. You know, we got a lot. You know, a lot of uh, you know, I don't know, spies. I guess you call it, or just people who just fly by night. People who you know who who are not part of us, but they are they are seeking the truth. But they need to learn how to act on it. They need to let the Father draw them closer and become part of the body. We're not being blinded by, by these deceitful workers out here. Um, let's go to Jeremiah five thirty one. Jeremiah Jeremiah five thirty one. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end there? You know, saying some of us love to have have people tell us what we want to hear. Sometimes, you know, these people get out here spread it, speak their false words. You know, we'll soak it up, submit to them because you know they're giving us what our flesh to lo- flesh loves. But in the end, what are we, what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to be destroyed. So let's stop giving ear to the false prophets, the people, the people that keep us in darkness, separate from the Most High and unclean. But you know, if you, if you like running dirty, you don't mind listening to these kind of preachers. You don't mind submitting to people like that because they're just like you. Same deceitful heart. But ugly, will you post Matthew? I'm, I'm sorry. No, excuse me. Let's say Matthew 6, 22 and 23, please. You know, because these people have a way that they see. They want to make your vision the same way, too. And it reads, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? You know, some people see things their way. Or the you know, the, the spirit of truth should be leading to God in all truth. But if, you know, if you got an eye that can't seem to grasp the truth of the scriptures that show you um, what we should be doing while it's casting out devils, healing the sick, or keeping the Sabbath, you know, obeying Yah in all the ways that we know how, the feast days, you know, your eyes not single. And you're walking in darkness in that way, because the, the, the light, the scriptures give us the light that we should be walking in. But again, people love listening to these false teachers, and even your own wicked, even our own wicked hearts too that deceive us. You know, 
Jesus said, take heed, you know, let, let no man deceive you, but, uh, <laughs> that's funny, but ugly what you put in there in your curly stooge voice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we have these people that deceive us and we, you know, give them so much heed. And the big, biggest thing is these people are causing a lot of confusion on Saints Mark. I was talking to a brother. And not just one of my brothers, but I've been talking to, um, I've even talked to, um, People, people out there that I work with and have come across, you know, people they even call. And there's so much confusion in people's minds about what we should be doing, how we should do things. You know, they're following pastor. You know, if he follows Christ, they follow along with us. They've been getting taught and, taught and instructed in a way. But since they're not, you know, hey, Brother Ugly, would you post First Corinthians 14.33, please? You know, but since they're not, you know, they're having, they're having these, these troubles with the word, with the spirituality. Some of them, some people, some people even wondering if, they, if they're even, if they're, if they're still, if they've been born again or if they're still born again, if they have the root walk, if, they, if they've uh, grieved them, you know, out of their life because of, you know, these things, these, these people that they've listened to with all the confusion and have them, you know, they got them walking in disobedience. You look at the Christian church, you know, they grace you, they, they, they grace you to you, to you blue in the face. You know, you got grace to, to, to be wicked Saturday night and, and, and go to church on Sunday, listen to the foul hands. And some of us Hebrews, we, we, we run dirty too. We'll keep the Shabbat, but yet we, we run filthy all week. And the sad thing is you think you're getting away with it. But the Father is going to visit that iniquity on you. So just repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Um, but let's read 1 Corinthians 14, 33. And for Yah is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You know, so the Father has a way that he's given us. All we got to do is walk in it. But let's, let's, let's look at some of the instructions that we're supposed to follow. Because, you know, cause the Bible tells us, you know, things. And I had a conversation with a brother. You know, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, receiving the Ruach. The man he knew, he, he supposedly had it. I say supposedly, but he told him that it wasn't necessary for him to receive it. Or, or it wasn't necessary that, um, that you didn't necessarily have to speak in tongues. Something to that effect. You, know, you got to wonder, what kind of spirit is that? It's teaching that to a to a, you know to a saint. You know these people when you when anything that you say you need to have some fear and love, fear of Yah. If you're gonna teach somebody something, know, knowing that you're gonna be held accountable for everything that you put out. You know because that soul is trusting in you and they're taking everything in in that you give them. Just like a babe, like a baby, you for your mama, you're feeding it, nursing it. You know they're coming to you for spiritual guidance. You're responsible for them. Um. Let's go to John, John chapter 20, verse 22, Brother Ugly. Now, this is something Jesus did and said to the disciples. And so it's clear-cut instruction. Shouldn't be any confusion or darkness in that. Lack of understanding. And when he, and when he had said this, you have to go back and read the chapter for all the context, saints. He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Brother Ugly. And he told them this. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, unto the othermost parts of the earth. You know, after, you, after you receive the Ruach, you're going to be witnesses unto me everywhere. You know, they're going to go forth in that power. But still, he told them in John 20, 22, hey, receive you the Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Then Acts, he told them, in Acts 1, 8, told them, hey, you're going to receive power after this come upon you. And many these people... You know, like Pastor was talking yesterday. You know, they're afraid when they feel the 
afraid and get bug eyed when they feel it when you know when they're in a place like this, especially when they feel the spirit moving in. Time to move on now. Let's go to Matthew twenty eight, starting at verse eighteen. It's keeping this real simple, saints, you know, instructions. But you think about it. If you don't follow the instructions, you're going to get confused. I'll just leave it at that. But, you know, there's another question that came to me. You know, this is about baptism. You know, first you got the you know, spirit baptism, and then you got the water baptism. You know, and Jesus said this in Matthew 28. We'll read through, um, uh, 18 through verse 18 through verse 20. In Matthew 28, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I mean, so be it. If you look at that, you know, the command is for the disciples to go baptize people. Because one of the things, as brother, when we were talking, um, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly like he said it, but pretty much he went to a place and um, they had you baptize yourself. I think you had to dunk yourself or something like that. That was a the method they used. But Jesus told the disciples to baptize the people, not to have them baptize themselves. You do it. That's the instruction. So there shouldn't be no confusion over baptism. Why don't we why why can't these people just follow the direction? If you're gonna baptize a man, you know, John the Baptist, the scripture I use with the brother, what was John? See, they called him John the Baptist. Why? Because of the action that he did. He he performed the baptism. You know, like if you die, can you bury yourself? You know, your body, your dead body's laying there on the ground. Are you gonna be able to bury yourself? You know, get in your body, come back to your body. Dig the hole, put yourself back in the in the grave, and then lay there and look at the dirt, waiting for it to come on you, because you can't get out there and bury yourself. You ever done that before, brother? Ugly? Did you baptize yourself? How about you, brother Dwayne and sister Jane, brother Steve? And then you guys baptize yourselves, or, or, or did somebody, or did some man put you in the water? And then when you receive the reward, who does that baptism? John said, there's one cometh after me, he's mighty than I. The same shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus even performs the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He baptizes you with that. Hallelujah. But Steve baptizes you. <laughs> and you baptize him. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> you didn't baptize yourself, Brother Dwayne? Come on, man. That's the instruction, ain't it? Baptize yourself. Put yourself in the water. You got an old song, take me to the water. You'll take yourself to the water and baptize yourself. Come on, man. You know, we don't have to follow follow Jesus' instructions. Who do you think he is? Is he the king or something? Is he the master? Is he your master? Does he tell you what to do? You listen to him? So there's people that cause this confusion. Who are they listening to? What spirit are they listening to? Do they know who they're of? And pastor baptized you. Hallelujah, brother. The pastor knows what to do, don't he? That's why he teaches us. Why do you think we put the YouTube, he puts the YouTube videos out showing how to baptize? If you don't know how to do it, do it. Follow the example pastors put forth in the, in the video. Hallelujah. Good blueprint. Oh, hallelujah, brother Ugly, Pastor Baptized, Brother Steve, Sister Wendy, and all the other Canadian saints. Hallelujah. He's, he's faithful, doing the job he's supposed to do, what he's commanded to do, and, and teaching as well. You know, that's one thing that people tell you to baptize yourself, but yet they want to teach you, though. You know, they, 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 they got half the instruction down, but they don't have the one other part. And they shouldn't even be teaching. Um, let's go to Matthew Chapter 16, verses 15, 16, 6, uh, 15 through 18. Remember, there's a reason why the Father, had, you know, gave us these instructions, why Jesus gave us these instructions. 
Because he wanted them to follow. You know, if you're a parent, you tell your child to do something. You want them to obey, right? Or if you're a boss, you tell your, tell your workers to do something. You want them to obey you, right? That's the same way with the king. He wants obedient service. That's what got our people in trouble to begin with. Then it rebelling against his commands. And of course, the Father had judgment for us for that. And I agree, Brother Ugly. Most saints want to be baptized by our pastors. I agree. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to read. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, of course, these people don't believe, believe in casting out devils, do they? But if you believe in my name, you know, if you profess them, Yeshua, whatever name you, name you want to call on, you know, do you do this? That's how you show your belief. You know, we're concrete people. You know, if you ain't baptized, <laughs> you're not going to be saved either, it says. You know, but they'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues. Oh, you know, hey, we're going to, like Pastor said, these people, they they, they deny all the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, they, they we, we ain't going to speak with tongues. You know, that's just babbling. That's, some, that's something foreign. You know, they're they speaking um, gibberish. You know, that's not the Ruach. Well, you wouldn't know anyway, some of you, because you, you don't have the baptism. You have no clue what you're hearing. Except the spirit interpreted. Your natural man at mind, the things of y'all foolishness to you. And hold on a minute. Okay, go to all the world and preach. We might have some missing scripture here. Okay. And of course, like Pastor would teach us about healing, you, know, you lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. I remember when um, the first time Pastor started teaching us about healing, you know, commanding, especially. You know, he did, he, he's up in, um, in front of the in, in front of the assembly, he had somebody come up there, and I think I, uh, uh, he, did, he did quite a few things. I think the first time he healed somebody's back, and then he um, did something else. Maybe a couple of people with back problems. I'm trying to remember the whole scenario, but I remember he um, I think he had me. I think I was on the left hand side, not the right. I was on his right hand side. He asked me, "Had me come up there and watch?" And somebody else come up there and watch. And I remember when I saw when I saw him, you know when. He, you know, somebody get healed right before my eyes. It like made me jump back. I'm like, whoa, what is this? You know, it kind of stalled me. Just you know, I, I, I guess I had a fear come on me that made me you know want to jump back. Whoa, you know, I almost wanted to run. It's like, what, what is this? You know, of course, you know, I supposedly believe the book. I thought, but yet there I was, afraid of the power. Y'all yeah, start moving like that. I was like, hey, what you know, what, what's going on in you? And then, fast, all right, hey, you you do. It. You know, lay, lay hands on somebody. I think it was um. Trying to remember, I think uh, he had me. Um, the person's adrenals was was bad. That's and um, laid hands on him the first time, didn't heal it all the way. And he said, "Do it again." You know, like he always tells us, "Hey, if it don't happen, don't work the first time. Keep going. Lay hands again. Something, and even keep your hands on them for a while." But uh, did it again, and they were good. But you know, it's as he's teaching us this, these things. You know, that way, if we don't have a line from here to Kalamazoo, wait for, you know, for folk, you know, being healed. And, and, and Pastor is so unselfish in that. He, 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 um, he shared with us how to, how to do these things. You know, because Jesus said, hey, greater works will I do what you do than I have, you know, because I'm going to the Father. You know, so you're going to do greater works. And so as, the, as, the, as he's able to put himself in us and help us to teach us how to allow his spirit to move through us, you can do great, greater things because Jesus was just one person. The disciples were only 12 men. Well, the apostles were only 12 men. And how many people we got today learning learning in this ministry alone? Not you know, there's, I'm sure there's others out there who who, who uh, obey the book too. But you know, just in this ministry alone, those of us you know who who actually believe enough to even try to lay hands on someone to heal them in faith. You know, it's a beautiful thing the pastor's teaching us this and has taught us this. How to cast out devils. I remember the first time we had mass deliverance. And I was scared to death. 
so to speak. I don't like saying it like that, but you know, I was, you know, fearful of that. But you know, but Pastor was so, so uh, convincing in his preach, so convicting in his preach. You know, you couldn't deny that there was, you know, the, the spiritual realities, you know, the spirit realm that's working within your own body. If you can, you know, see things. I, I remember I used to get real bad um, neck pain, the back of my, the base of my neck, and the, the, or the top of my neck, and the base of my head. And um, and uh, one time we were sitting in the dining hall, and that, and that thing started up again. And Pastor said to me, you know, that that could be a demon, or it might be a demon. Well, he said that is a demon. Something, one of those, one of those things. And I remember just looking at him with that that scornful unbelieving look you know my eyes went up i'm like hmm i don't know about that you know can't have devils you know we got the holy spirit we can't have devils in us. you know I, I wish i was just like pastor please deliver me i wish that would have been the response but you know my heart was still wicked and unbelief fearful couldn't get delivered at that time but i remember um sometime after that on his um, old shortwave broadcast he's preaching about leviathan and um and I was listening to it, because um, the pastor, you know, he's preaching deliverance hard back then, you know, just, you know, getting us ready, you know, trying to get that word into us, getting, helping us with our perspectives, you know, the, you know, trying to fight to get past the unbelief. If you get enough faith and uh, preach the word enough, you know, we can we can believe it, and we start acting on it. And um, you know, he was preaching, he was preaching that, he was preaching on um, on Leviathan on that on that particular blog talk, and everything he was saying, you know, the, the symptoms, the characteristics of Leviathan. And I'm sitting here I'm like, man, you know, I'm listening to him. I said, man, Father, help me. I don't want any demons in if I got them. You know, of course, I'm saying if. Now, they're there. <laughs> if. <laughs> I shouldn't say if. But, you know, I, I you know, need help with this. I don't, I, I'm not sure what I want to believe on this. But I'm trying to keep my heart open. I don't want to deny it, you know, because I know, I know my past. I know he ain't a liar. So if he's preaching this, it's got to be true. And I see it in the Bible because he's hot. He's showing us everything in the Bible. So how do you deny it, you know? People in Africa got devils, but, you know, not here in America. You know, we don't need deliverance in America or Canada, any of the Western nations. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't need deliverance. You know, we, we got medical science. You know, we go to the doctor for our arthritis and our cancers. You know, they cut them out, destroy your body, poison you. But, you know, you'd rather have that than just have, you know, have a devil cast out of you or have enough faith just to be healed in, in, in those cases. But I remember he was preaching about Leviathan. You know, some they're taking notes, writing down all the characteristics. You know, and after the after the broadcast went off, uh, I took my sheet of paper that wrote all the characteristics of Leviathan on that he had. Now, and, and I went into prayer, and I went to the father. And said, "Father, you know, like Hezekiah laid up that that um sheet from the from uh the king. What was that king's name? Dog on it. Off of the king's message was it Rabshiki and uh the king of Assyria." You know, I did like Hezekiah did. Yeah, but I'm going to give us pills. And we get even sicker. And we went to the witch doctor. But I, but I laid out my, my, you know, my, all those, those characteristics like Hezekiah did, you know, before the father. I said, Father, this is in me. I want to know. You know, however, you know, I want to be delivered from it. I want, I want to, you know, get, you know, I need to know this. I want to be free from this if it is. You know, like I think his pastor was so convicted, so convincing in his preaching. But then we, at the time came, we had that mass deliverance, and that was one of the the spirit that manifested talking out of me. And I'm telling you, saying so that was that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have believed it. It, it was it was okay happening with my brothers and sisters around me. I'm hearing spirits crying out, you know, screaming out and seeing manifestations all around me. But, but yet when it happened with my within my own body, this own temple, that you know, of course, you know, Holy Ghost filled. I'm, you know, believe me, I can't handle the devil. But what's this? What's this war going on in the inside of me? I'm not speaking, but yet something's talking out of me using my voice. Like I seen in the scriptures, like hey, what you know, this, this made the Bible come come so much more alive, you know. And I, and I bless y'all for pastor because without him, I mean, my, my goodness, my faith has increased because of him, you know, because of him. Since I've met him, I create, my faith has been on the increase. I mean, I bless him for that. I really do. I thank I thank y'all for the man of y'all They're having the faith to uh to minister to us to help us to get past our own unbelief, you know. And he had to, you know, sure pastor had to get past his, his own areas where he where he may have doubted or didn't believe or just didn't understand things. But but I'm glad he plowed through and you know and the father used him to reach us, reach me, you know, convince me sound. I'm like, man, wow. All I can say was wow. <laughs> On the inside, I'm like, man, what is this? You know, how how is this possible? <laughs> you 
<laughs> I'm telling you, this you know, an amazing thing. I'm sure you all got testimonies of your own dealing with that, and you know, with your own mind and dealing with that. But acknowledging that truth and getting a witness of it, that you know, with the father, you got the scripture posted there, brother ugly. Yeah, in yeah, hold on. Matthew 16, Mark 16, 20, and they went forth and preached every word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. You know, and that was casting out devils with a sign following. These demons manifested. They were manifesting all over the place in this in this particular tabernacle at that time. And, you say, and after that, you know, Bass went full board into it. You know, it looked like, it looked like a WD, WWE wrestling match went on in this place after Sabbath service. You know, people getting delivered, you know, chairs flying, demons hollering. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sight to see. But, you know, I'm so grateful because I remember hearing in the Christian church, you know, that's not for our time. All that ended with the apostles. You know, and, and that's just a straight up lie, straight up deceit. And even these camps, the Hebrew camps, and, he, and, and even the uh, Messianics, they lying to the people as well, keeping them bound. But thank y'all that this ministry preaches deliverance. The man of y'all preaches deliverance. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Ugly, would you post 1 Samuel 15, 22, and 23, please? Hallelujah. And it reads, And Samuel said, Hath Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yah, Yahweh, he he also he hath also rejected thee from being king. But you know these men, the people we listen to who don't who go against this word, who don't follow. The instructions, you know, the teaching you of rebellion, making you to rebel along with them. You know, they refuse when they when they refuse to obey the Most High, and they te- and they teach you not to do it too. You know, they teach you rebellion. The Father, you know, He has great delight. He don't have, you know. He, Samuel says it again, has the Yahweh has great delight in burnt offerings, offerings and sacrifices. As in obeying the voice, to obey, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken in the fat of rams. Isn't it better to cast out devils, to heal the sick, and to baptize people than to, than to disobey that Jesus' commands for us what to do? Being ministers to the nations, teaching them. We should be teaching the whole gospel now, like you full gospel churches out there. You should be a uh, we should be teaching the whole gospel, not not half of it, not a quarter of it, the whole gospel, obeying everything that the master's told us. And those of you that refuse, amongst us who refuse to uh, receive the Holy Spirit, that refuse to have devils cast out of you, or, or to even participate in casting them out, and all and healing the sick, those things, that you you are rebellious. Yeah, you're in rebellion. That's what the Most High, that's what Jesus has commanded us to do. By you not doing it, you're in rebellion. Don't think you're going to get off. But don't blame the preachers or anybody else. It's you. It's your unbelief. It's your fear. Your rebellion against the Most High that keeps you from not doing it. It's better to obey. Hallelujah. But you know, a lot of times we have this mentality. Yeah, that's right, brother. The pastor has warned us about saints who, who avoid deliverance. What, what do they say? Don't trust. Them. Let's go to Matthew um, 15, 1. Matthew chapter 15, we'll read verses 1 through uh, 1 and 2. Now, one verses one through three. Then came to to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, "Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread." 
But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of Yah by your tradition? Now that's that's the mindset of some people. Hey, you're not keeping our tradition of going to you know going to church on Sunday, of, of you know of eating swine, of celebrating Christmas, you know worshiping our bowing down before crosses and worshiping our idols. You know you don't have you don't have praying hands on your mantle in your living room. But Jesus answered, "Why do you transgress the commandment of Yah? <laughs> Come on, Saint." <laughs> You know, why aren't we keeping the Sabbath day? <laughs> some of us, some of us still breaking. Some of us still, still, I hate to say it, still got idols in our house too. Not just your natural house either, your, your, your heart. All right, let's go on. On that same chapter, verse 7, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth and on to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Let's get rid of this hypocrisy. Let's get obedient to the Most High. Hallelujah. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You know, just like to follow the devil, ain't it? Let's go on to verse 14. Jesus said this, Matthew 15, verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. You, you want to fall into, you want to have the same end of these people that, that, that you listen to, saints? The wrong people that you listen to? Brothers and sisters out there, you want the same end as they have? Because their end is going to be destruction. Stop following. Follow the people who follow follow follow, follow a man like Pastor Dow. I'm gonna just say that. But why why you want to why you want to promote Pastor Dow? He's only he's the pastor I follow. I, re, I highly recommend him than over some of these false shepherds you folks are listening to. That you allow to teach you these false brethren that you allow to teach you that hate your soul. They're, just, they're wolves in sheep's clothes. You just don't realize it yet because you're blind. And anyone that speaks against that, you, you know, you, you call you call them the enemy. But yet, just look at the fruit. By the fruit, you shall know it. If you have eyes to see. Then answered Peter and said unto them, "Declare unto us this parable." And Jesus said, "Said, are you also without understanding? Do you not yet understand?" That whatsoever enter at, whatsoever enter entereth in at the mouth, goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. So what's coming out of a man's heart, mouth is coming from his heart, and that's what's going to defile you. If somebody's feeding you unbelief, feeding you fear, that's going to defile you. Feeding you lies is going to defile you. Feeding you rebellion is defiling you. It's going to keep you from obeying the most high. It's going to keep you on the outside. All right, brother, let's go to 2 Peter one nineteen. Second Peter one nineteen. And it reads, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto the light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private Interpretation. You know, you got these people that have their own secret revelations on the scriptures. You know, we listen. You know, we listen to them, and they deceive our mind. But you know, but it don't line up with the words. It's not line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, they got their own. They, they, they wrestle the scriptures and twist them to their own destruction. And then and a lot of saints are following behind. A lot of people 
No, they're falling behind these false teachers, these liars, these wicked men. You need to separate yourselves from them. Stop falling along with this foolishness thing. You know, because it's foolish to disobey Yah. And it's foolish not to be not not to study, you know, to study yourself approved so that you're not not being deceived. You know, the pastor tells you all the time, you know, look behind them, study, learn these scriptures. And when you find out a lot of times these people out there they dis people disagree with pastors, they got they got they get they get to study and find out, hey, wait a minute. He ain't wrong, he's telling the truth. <laughs> I'm wrong. No. Hard pill for some folks to swallow and they won't swallow it either. You know, but they better keep their private interpretation. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Sip of water here. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. We'll read down to verse 4. I think that's what it is. All right, we'll read down to verse 6. 1 through 6. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Hmm. I had another scripture somewhere. Oh, yeah. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. No, that's what the serpent said. She's having a conversation with the serpent, right? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yah has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. No, for God doth know, in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And of course, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her. Now let's go back to verse one here. You know, the serpent was so was subtle, and he said, Yea, hath y'all said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You know, the woman's having a conversation with this serpent, right? This is with the devil, the deceiver. But you know, well, what's the serpent saying today? To you out there. And within your own self sometimes. What's he saying today? You know, depending on who you listen to today, he said, the white man's Esau. We're not under the law. It's okay to celebrate Christmas and to have a tree. You know, like some of these compromising men out there, tell you, you know, putting Christmas trees in the house to please the wife. We all know who that guy is, don't we? I ain't going to say his name. You know, and how about this? You know, I heard one one false a couple of um these preachers out there, you know, they believe in Yah for a sixty million dollar private jet, you know, to preach to preach the gospel. But what else is the serpent saying? It's okay for you to hate your brother? Have an evil eye when you're looking at your brother? It's okay to walk in business? The serpent telling some of you guys that? Some of you saints that? It's okay for um, Brother Ugly hates Brother Steve, but but you know, but 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 you know, but he loves Jeeps. You know, it's okay when the serpent speaks that and, and Brother Ugly's heart tell him, you know, hey, you can hate your brother whom you, whom you can see, but you still can love y'all who you can't see. You know, what's the serpent saying? It's okay for you sisters to hate each other, not to have a friend, not to be friends, but to be bitter towards each other, spiteful, just doing you know doing your foolishness with each other to each other. Walk in your wicked ways? Or well, it's okay for you wives to disrespect and rebel against your husband? Let the, the serpent say that to you? How about you, husband? The serpent tells you it's okay to despise and hate your wife? You know, hating your own flesh? You know, that's okay, right? It's okay to be bitter against her? The serpent saying that in your mind, brothers? Or well, what else is the serpent saying? It's okay to rebel against the elders, the pastors, all the leadership? Not submit in any kind of way, but give them hell, hell to the day you die. You know, cause division, so discord, like over in Proverbs sixteen, Proverbs six sixteen. 
You start there, read down that list. Am I making sense to some of y- to y'all saints? You know, is that the, you know is that the message the serpent you know spitting out today? And of course, he tells you, you won't surely die. You know, you you won't get in trouble with, with y'all. You won't you won't bust hell wide open. You won't go to hell because you you know hate your brother whom you can't see and. And um, you don't have to. You can take your gift. From, you know, you can take your gift to the altar. You're gonna be acceptable to Yah. He'll 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 receive you. You still can go and pray to him. You got to get nothing right with your husband, your wife, your brother. None, none of the leaderships that you sin against, the fraud, hurt, whatever. People that you deceive and mislead. You know that's okay. All right, hallelujah. All right, we're going to go on. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. You got that, Brother Ugly? 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, aren't these ministers today, you know, you think some of you folks are so enamored with them, like what pastor yesterday, you deceive you by what talent and um deceive us with deceive people with talent. I forgot the other word he used. But you know, but these but you know, you get deceived by these guys, they speak so well, you know, these soft, smooth words, take what you want to hear, you the sweet little lies and uh you know, you, you you go right along with them. You know, you eat that fruit of lies, and and it tastes good to your soul because you know because don't cost you nothing. Don't require you to be transformed, to be changed, to be holy, to be righteous. You know, to walk in the newness of life. But you know, it's no marvel Satan's ministers be transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Though you know, these people teaching these lies. Confusing people, destroying people, destroying the saints of the Most High Yah. You know they're not discerning the Most High's body, but they ain't giving to them anyway because they're wicked devils that that people give ear to. The saints give ear to unknowingly at times, and some of you knowingly and willingly. And, and, and that minister of Satan can be in you too, getting you, get, you know, getting you to agree with the your own rebellions, your own deceitful, wicked ways. You know, being that same serpent speaking in your ear. Then you go out and be a viper and try to spit in somebody else's ear. Then you get mad when you get rebuked by a righteous brother or sister that tells you, "Hey, get that mess out of here. You don't come, don't come, don't come in with that mess." I'm gonna let pastor know. I'm gonna let the elders know. But let's go to First uh, John chapter four, verse six. John chapter four, verse six, and it reads, "We are we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us." He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You know, that's pretty self explanatory, ain't it, brothers and sisters? You can tell who's who's of who's of Yah by, by how they hear. And by what they do. You look at the amount of people that can't hear pastor at first. You know, some of them, you know. You know, Pastor, give an example like how some women women hate his guts at first, but then they love him afterwards once they realize that he's not against them, he's actually for them. You know, how many of us, you know, hear things that Pastor may say, you know, you want to hate the man of y'all. <laughs> you know, you don't want to hear what he's saying. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, he's telling the truth. They, they gotta, you know, line up. You know, you got to line up and straighten up. You get obedience. But, you know, these people who, who don't hear us, they got these false doctrines. You know, they, they're speaking from the spirit of error. That's what's really teaching through them and they can't hear the truth and it's turned many hearts hearts away of many people from obeying the truth because uh you know that, that deception is so strong in them and the people give so much place to them give so much heed to them let's make sure we don't we don't follow up in the same pattern let's make sure we got ears for the truth a heart that loves the truth and we don't get offended at the truth. If we're willing to walk in it, walk in the light, as he's in the light. You know, because he said, no man that follows after me walketh in darkness. 
<laughs> are any of you saints in darkness today? Are you in darkness, Brother Steve? Brother Charlos? Brother Jeff? Are you saints on the chat board? Are y'all, are y'all in darkness or are you walking in the light? Are you able to hear the truth? I believe you are. I believe you do. And praise Yah that you are saints that love Yah and love his word and love his truth. And don't forget, great peace that they that love your <laughs> but other not but love the law, <laughs> and nothing shall offend them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody in the light. Hallelujah. That's good. Stay in the light. Hallelujah. It's getting brighter. And don't forget what Pastor said. You know, we're gonna get so holy. We're, holy it's gonna be hard for people to fellowship with us. So you're seeing that to, even today. Like when I talk about people that forsake the fellowship, you know, you think about it. They don't want to be around righteousness. They really don't. They don't want the, they don't want the light to shine on them because they don't want their corruption seen and dealt with. And maybe it could be a good brother, a good sister, but they need to come out of that wicked way. That's all. But you know, I remember years ago, Pastor, uh, he talked to Sister Tomoko. She used to say that Pastor was that clear voice. And he, you know, he used to time and time again in the past, she used to call up, hey, Sister Tomoko, am I still clear? And she said, yes. I she said it, but you know, and, and it's just a beautiful thing to uh that we got a clear voice of truth speaking to us. And the Father's given us this man, the man of y'all, Pastor Dow. And then we got two pastors in, in this ministry, Pastor Dow and Pastor Court. You know, but you know, I thank y'all for our pastor these you know, that he's feeding us with knowledge and understanding. And so if anything, Saints, you know, Pastor I think was it that scripture he read yesterday? How Paul said everyone everyone in um Asia, you know, has has left me. Let's not be among that crowd that's with, the, with this man of y'all that the Father's given us. Let's make sure we don't leave him. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, hey, will you also leave me? You know, when he told them, told them the truth, and they, you know, some, some people got offended and did, and did leave. But let's not be like that. Let, let's cling to the man of y'all. Let's cling to the voice of truth. Let's, let's, let's be, they're speaking through him, the Father. You know, Yeshua was using them. Jesus is using them, teaching us, feeding us with knowledge and understanding. Let's continue to grow with them. Let's strengthen the man of y'all's hands. Keep him up in prayer. And don't forget to stay, stay on your spiritual warfare. Send them back curses. And be diligent with the prayers that pastors um been giving us. Keep praying them. Keep praying them. Let's, let's get right. Let's get clean. Let's cast off these works of darkness. Hallelujah. Most of all saints, let's, let's, let's stay in fellowship with the Most High. And stay in his love. Let's abide in him. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I got for you tonight, saints. I do bless you all. Thank you all for being here tonight for this fellowship. You know, there's a lot of people that are jealous of this fellowship, too, that we have amongst this body. Like Teacher Shane has brought that up before. They, 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 they hate this fellowship. They're jealous of it, and that's why they hate it, because they can't be a part of it, uh, except they come through the door the right way. But anyway, thanks. I do bless you all. I thank you for being here. Thank you, Brother, Brother Ugly, for being my co-host, for helping me with this. And I just bless you all. Thanks for being here. I love you all dearly. Can't wait to hug some of you guys as next as you make it here, those of you who will be coming, tabernacles or whenever. Just bless you all. Love you all. Keep strengthening one another, saints. And keep staying in the love of the Most High Yah. I do bless you and thank you for being with me. And I'm a busy shalom. Uh oh, look at him looking. <laughs>